Okay, I'm going to show you my bench. Um, I built this bench last year to replace my old bench. Um, just some background, I have done carpentry for 35 years and uh, furniture and cabinet work and built-ins for 25 or 6 of those years. So, I've done this a long time. I've been through a lot of benches and my latest bench I did not put a tool well in it. Um, I think it's fairly obvious that I have a certain amount of clutter and that's just the way of working. It's uh, not good. I don't think I would brag on it but I'm used to working that way and uh, for a cluttered person tool wells tend to clutter up and fill with shavings and I despise that so the second time around I went with more of a Nicholson style bench and put the slot, removable slot rail in it. Uh, it's actually in sections and then when you flip it over you can have bench stops which I don't use very often but I like the slot system and you can also slip, it's easier than flipping it to actually put a stop in there. So if you want the stop system just have some loose stops and put them in there. Half inch plywood works good if you set it up right. Then this could be fixed. Um, that's one thought. I like the slots because when I have chisels out, um, they're, they're in a chisel box all the time, but when I have chisels out certain sizes that I'm working with, I put them in the slot. So um, these are Nerex chisels that I started using. I think they're good value and they're excellent chisels. So I get several sizes out sometimes and I have them in the slot. Um, I purposely didn't clean because this is how I work and um, the pocket joint jig isn't out all the time. That, that's only used occasionally but I will clamp it in the vise and use it. It's a good tool. I have one of the original Craig jigs that I bought at a show in 90 and they used to be mean, uh, machined out of a solid block of aluminum and it's a good tool. I still use it. Didn't have any adjustments or anything and that's 26 years old now. But um, this bench is set, uh, 7 feet long, well 86 inches long and 29 deep and 36 tall. Has a row of dog holes here and a row of I don't have very many dog holes, but I have, I have a, a one row on the top, that short row, a six inch spacing, then they jump to foot, go down the bench. And then I have a row in the apron. I use two Schoberg's light, light duty, hold fast of the screw down type. They fit a three quarter inch hole and they are fantastic. They just are great to work with. So I can do anything I want to do here. Jointing, dovetailing, anything that I need to do. The front vise, I've never had a bench vise or a leg vise with a bench screw and I love it. And I can do a lot with it and it's got a large capacity and I like it. Um, as a right-handed person, this is the conventional placement, um, you could just as easily put it down here and it would be great for a right-handed person. So I don't buy into a lot of the conventional thinking about where a vice is supposed to be for a right-hand person. I'm not sure they don't have it backwards in the first place. I know there's more of this debate than, than uh, what I'm talking about, but um, the tail vice, I use an Eclipse quick release vice pattern after the old record and it is a fantastic vise and uh, I use it as a tail vise and a regular vise. Conventional thinking would say for a right handed person that this would be down here and then this would be here for a right handed person and this setup works fantastic. I mean, even this vise, if you're cutting a tenon or something and you're cutting this way or cutting wood, cutting a piece, a small piece or something, 
uh, the bench is right there. And if you notice, how, how often have you seen benches all chewed up right here? And so I'm, I'm not sure about that. I put small pieces in here and cut off the end, and it's fantastic. And, ch and chiseling and other operations. So um, I can mortise in either one of these vices. They're strong enough. Uh, I tend to mortise over top, on top of the ch uh, bench, over top of leg. And that works well, and it's solid. And um, yeah, it, th this is a good bench. It's um, could have been taller. I was afraid 36 would be too tall, and really could have been 37 or 38. So don't be afraid to build your bench tall, and uh, you may be surprised. I'm only 5'11", and this is not too tall at 36 inches. Um, with the clutter I have, you know, the bench is big, but I can put long planks here and surface them or whatever. But, um, you know, if you aren't a cluttered person, most of your work's right here. If you're not a cluttered person, you, you could probably chop two feet off this bench and do with a five-foot bench, if nothing's on it. And, and you would do fine. Just make sure you make it heavy enough not to move around on you if you're using hand tools. But um, the bench has a shelf and is cluttered, which is not good, but it's good, it's good and bad. The clutter is stuff I have to have. I absolutely have to have it, so um, I got a place for it. It's bad because I spend time digging for stuff. And looking for stuff you think you should have stuff so you, you dig for it and if you're trying to make a partial living or living like I do uh, making pieces of furniture um, it slows you down to be looking through clutter but I have to have these things so it, it's a mixed bag I keep some bench hooks and um, some hammers winding sticks uh, some holding devices. I have bench hooks that of several styles. I have a saw vise for filing and setting the teeth on my own for myself on my own hand saws. And um, I have saws on the back of the bench. Um, magnetic bars and some hand saws. I reach over the bench and grab them stick them on that works really well I have another one off the end of the bench with some hand saws for a little finish work uh, I like Western styles Western style saws the best um, but I probably have more experience with Japanese saws I've always used them um, this I'll do a video sometime on this saw the little cobalt back saw is absolutely fantastic saw for the money, you know, 12 bucks or less. If, this is a big if, if you file the teeth and set the teeth yourself, and in some cases remove some of the set yourself, but I can do anything with that. So I can dovetail, and I do a lot of dovetails. The only dovetails I do are hand cut. I do a lot of dovetails. I can dovetail, tenon, rip, cross cut, anything with that saw. And you would not believe the work I've done with that saw. I do use Japanese saws. I have um, several. And I use a gent saw. I have a, a Vaughn bear saw, finish saw. This Japanese saw is a Vaughn saw, the bear saw, Vaughn Bushnell bear, BS250. Um, the teeth are induction hard, so you can't sharpen them, but they're... They're, th they're throwaways, but they are the best throwaway saw there is. They are the best Japanese hand saw there is for the money. It's the one you want for under $30. Don't even look in an Irwin or any others that, if it's in this price range. Um, I've had, I have had a lot of these saws, and they're good. I've had better saws too, but um, for the money, that this is the one to get. I use two Sandvik saws, an 8 point and a 10 point. Um, they're called the Norseman, Sandvik Norseman. 
and I think they're the best saws in the world. Um, you can pay more money, but for handsaw, traditional Western handsaw, I think they're the best there are. And I have an 8 point and a 10 point. The 8's more of a rip cut pattern. The 10 has a little bit more of set and filing for cross cut. But the, either one will cross cut or rip. Um, they're fantastic saws. And uh, I do keep some be uh, bench planes out all the time. I do an astronomical amount of work with a number four and number five bench plane. I use, I have a bunch of planes, but currently I'm using these Miller's Falls that I got off eBay and restored, and they are great cutters. And I have a record that I bought in 1990, and number four, it was uh, really an economy model, didn't have the adjustable frog, and uh, it is a tremendous plane, and it's a shame they're not making planes anymore. And then my my go-to block plane, I have a lot of block planes, but my go-to is a simple Stanley 12220. This is a Craftsman version, Stanley probably made it, but the 12220 is a very simple design, no adjustable throat, it's not a low angle plane, I don't think you need those, and I do a lot of work with that plane. Yeah, it, it's the block plane that I reach for first, uh, most, but um, like I said, most of the work I do, the number four plane will do most anything you want to do. I do have uh, two number 80 cabinet scrapers. I use this Kuntz. It's newer. I like it. And cuts really good on stubborn woods. And then cabinet scra card scrapers are essential to me. So I have them all the time out. This red thing, by the way, this is a piece of carpet padding, and it is not here for the tools. I was padding a piece of war, a piece I was doing, some work I was doing. It, it, it's an ice grippy surface, and it makes good padding. So if you can acquire some of that, it's good to have around. You can also use a shelf liner, which is good for that, and gri grips the the bench good. Um, but uh, I don't want you to think that I think you need this out for tools or anything, because you don't. Um, I, I was taught to lay a plane on its side, and that sounds right. Um, but actually, tools can, it bumps into, you know, tools bump into it, and you can nick the cutting iron, and it's not the best way. Especially if you have a tool well, that's even more problematic. The tool's meant to cut wood. So it's meant to be down, just put it down is, is the, best, the best thing. Sometimes I'll suspend it on something like uh, another block of wood or something. Sometimes you would see me suspend it, uh, but you don't even need to do that. The, the best thing is just set the plane down. That's my uh, opinion anyway. Um, um, Go-to squares are... Combination squares, I have a big one and a small one I use a lot. Um, and in keeping with a carpenter's stubborn mentality, I have a speedy square out all the time. I like the Empire. It's laser etched and you can read it really well and it, it has the largest saddle of any of them I've ever used. So it's just a really nicely made tool. I, I like the Empire brand of hand tools for the money. The dogs I use are the Paul Sellers style of homemade dogs. I've always used homemade dogs. Uh, I like his little wire system to friction fit the the dog in the holes. They work well, and um, I use them all the time. I like having a screwdriver all the time on the bench, so I have a multi multi tip screwdriver. I have uh, several marking knives. This is one I'm currently using. Ontario Knife Company. It's called a tomato knife, but it is doesn't it look like a great marking knife? And, and it is. So this is probably a keeper. Um, I keep a utility knife all the time. Um, this is a Stanley 10-788. This is the best knife you can buy for the money. 
and I've had them all, I think. Linux makes a good knife for twice the money, but for eight bucks, these uh, are toolless blade chains, toolless storage, and they don't tend to let the blade yank out, and um, that's a big thing. Otherwise, you might as well use the old 10 099, which was the original one. They just last and last and last and never wear out. They're the finest knife ever made. But, um, I like this knife here. Uh, I'm not obsessed about tools. It might seem that way. I like to think that I'm just specific about what works and what I like. And uh, a tool I started using, I've always had a scratch hole and used it. This is a Narex all, but it has facets on it. It's got faces that have been filed onto it, and it is a fantastic marking tool and pre-screw driving tool. A lot of times in softwoods, I don't even pre-drill. I can push this in and, and form holes lightning fast, and uh, it's just a fantastic tool. It goes back to a, an old design of having a four-sided or three-sided awl instead of a round awl. And I've always used scratch awls, but uh, it's kind of a nerdy thing to talk about, but you, this is a great, great tool. In fact, I've taken old screwdrivers and begun to grind facets on them. I have one in the truck and even scratch alls. Take take them and file faces on them and you will improve the tool if you're woodworking with the tool. So, um, yeah, I have, this is a sacrilege to have a metal mechanics chest for woodworking, but it was fast and easy to get going in this shop and um, I like it a lot and this has hand tools in it and a few power tools. That is a video for another day uh, just by itself. So, you know, what do you need? How, what is this? What do I think is essential? Because I'm actually streamlining um, down to what I think I really need. I use old, uh, I use shoe bags on the wall, which I think is a great method for storing hand tools and um, actually streamlining though. You don't need all that. I don't need all that. And the question, a good video would be, what do you need? And um, you, it's probably a lot less than you think. Um, and you probably need more hand tools than you think you do. And probably should be using hand tools more than you think you should, um, in my opinion. So, um, yeah, I want to post this video and see what people want to talk about and uh, what questions they have. Benches are a big topic, and um, people spend a lot of time researching them. And, and I will tell you, this bench works fantastic, especially if you do some hand work. But if you need to hold work, period, for routing it or whatever, um, you need a good bench. And... Uh, Thanks for watching.